It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Well, hello there. Here we are with chapter seven, lesson number five, solving polynomial equations, or in other words, finding the roots of a polynomial. Now, solving equations is something that you have been doing for years, and if you're anything like Adam, you absolutely love them. But these are going to be polynomial equations, which may look a bit trickier. But we can easily solve them by using the factorized form of the polynomial. In other words, as I said, you're finding the roots of the polynomial. What that means, remember, the roots are the values of x that make the polynomial equal to zero. So if you're asked to solve it, you're wanting to find these values of x. Or if you graphed it, it would be the places on the x-axis that the graph would cross when the y value is equal to zero. I'll do a few examples of that then. So example number one, given x minus three is a factor, find all the roots of x cubed minus four x squared plus x plus six equals zero. So we're told right away that x minus three is a factor. Now if x minus three is a factor, you can set that equal to zero. You can then change the subject of the formula to x, so you can solve it for x and you get x equals three. Therefore, x equals three is going to be a root. So we know if we use our L shape and we put three to the left of that line and we work our way along, we should get zero here because the remainder will then be zero, meaning that three is a root, meaning x minus three is a factor. So working our way along with that, Set up the L shape, take the coefficients, and we've got one, negative four, one, and six. We've got three here because we had x minus three equals zero, so x is three. Work your way along, so add the columns, multiply across by the three, one times three is three. Add, you get a negative one, multiply by three. Add again, multiply, and finally add, and we get zero, which is what we expect because x minus three is a factor. Because the remainder then is a zero, this gives us the remaining coefficients. So we can then say, I'll just get rid of that. We can then say that if we factorize the x cubed, take four x squared at x add six equals zero, we will end up with x minus three. We were told right away that was a factor, but this lets us get the coefficients of this other factor. So we can have one x squared minus one x minus two equals zero. However, over here, we need to factorize this more. And if you factorize that, just do it the way that you have been doing for years. Go off to the side, factorize x squared minus x minus two, and it gives us x minus two bracket x plus one. Make sure you include equals zero because we're told in the question that this polynomial equals zero, so we need to include that. You know then, we have factorized it fully, and if, the, and if it equals zero, we can then say that one of these brackets must be equal to zero. So you can say that if x minus three equals zero, x would equal three. If x minus two equals zero, x would equal two. And if x plus one was equal to zero, then x would equal a negative one. Therefore, we have three roots. We've got three places that the graph would cross the x-axis. So this is the roots that you're going to get. As I said, if you did graph that, we're not asked for it, we are just asked to work out the roots. But if you graph the polynomial, since there's three values, these would be where the graph would cross the x-axis. So that would be the graph of the x cubed, take four x squared, add x, add to six. And you can clearly see that it crosses at negative one, two, and three. Let's try a second example. Example number two. Solve 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 18x plus 27 equals zero. So with this, we aren't given a factor. We're not told x plus seven is a factor or x minus two is a factor. We're also not told any of the roots. So we're not given a factor or a root. So what do you do? Well, what you need to do is you need to pick some values of x. Start with one, go for one, negative one, go for two, negative two, three, negative three. Sub them in here and you're wanting to see what will give you zero. Or you could set up your L shape. You could put in one to the left of the vertical line or two or three, negative one, negative two, and work your way along to get a remainder of zero. So really you're wanting to work out what's going to give you zero. 
If you work out uh, f of 1, f of negative 1, f of 2, f of negative 2, you can try them yourself, but they don't give you 0. f of 3 will, though, so I'm going to start with that to save a little time. So write down the coefficients. We've got 2, negative 3, negative 18, and 27. You can always double check if you sub in 3 there. So 2 times 3 cubed, take away 3 times 3 squared, take away 18 times 3 at 27. You will get 0, but you remember, you need the coefficients of your other terms so you have to use your L shape working through this. So it's sticking a 3 to the left of that line. Add the columns, so we've got 2, multiply by the 3, you get 6, add the columns, gives you 3, multiply by 3 is 9. Uh, add the columns gives you negative 9, multiply you get negative 27, and add and you do get 0. That's just confirming that. So really, since the remainder is 0, x minus this number is going to be a factor. So x minus that 3 will be a factor. Therefore, if we factorise this fully, we can say that uh, 2x cubed, take 3x squared, take 18x plus 27 equals 0. We're told that in the question. And factorising it, well, because you've got x minus 3, that will go in one bracket. And then we have the coefficients of the other terms in uh, over here. So remember, because this is x cubed, take 1 off the power gives us x squared. So therefore, we will have 2x squared plus 3x minus 9 equals 0. Factorising this bracket here will give us 2x minus 3, bracket x plus 3. Make sure you keep the first bracket, make sure you keep equal 0. But from there, similar to the first example, if you multiply them to get 0, then one of these brackets must be equal to 0. So you can say that x minus 3 equals 0, or 2x minus 3 equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0, meaning then x would equal 3, or x would equal 3 over 2, or x would equal negative 3. So that is us solving that equation. We're finding that there are three roots. Three, negative three, and three over two. Example number three. Show that x cubed, add x squared, add two x, add two equals zero, has uh, only one real root. Again, you're not given a factor or a root. We're told that it has one root, but we're not told what it is. So again, we're going to have to try and get a remainder of zero, try and evaluate this to get zero. So we need to work out f of one, f of two, f of three, f of negative one, f of negative two. We need to work our way along to see what will give us a zero. If we do that, say you worked out f of one, then you would substitute one in in place of x. So you'd have one cubed, add 1 squared, add 2 times 1, add 2. Well, if you do that, you get 6. It's obviously not equal to 0, so 1 is not going to work. So you try negative 1, f of negative 1, so you do negative 1 cubed, add negative 1 squared, add 2 times negative 1, add 2. Well, if you work that out, it does give us 0. And because it gives us 0, we're subbing in negative 1, so we know that x equals negative 1 will be a root. You can also reverse that as well. If x equals negative one's root, that would be the number that's to the left of the vertical line. So x minus that, x take away negative one, in other words, x add one, would be a factor. And we can use that later on. Either way though, because we know x is negative one's root, well, we've found one root, but we've not shown that it has only one root. So let's go back to our L shape. Take the coefficients of x cubed, x squared, x and the number on its own and set it up like this. So we worked out negative 1 and we found we got 0, so sub negative 1 here and work your way along. Add the columns, multiply by negative 1. If you do that, then you will end up with 0, which is confirming that x equals negative 1 as a root or x plus 1 as a factor. Again, we've not really shown that there's only one root, so we still have to keep going. Let's factorise it fully. So factorising, because we know x plus 1 is a factor, or x take away negative 1 there, which becomes x plus 1, we can rewrite that as... Dun, 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 dun. Let's bring it over here. We can say that's x plus 1 times... And remember, it was an x cubed. If you take 1 off the power, it becomes x squared. So we can say that's 1x squared at 0x add 2. In other words, x squared add 2 equals 0. 
If I try in this, x squared add 2, highest common factor, there isn't one difference of two squares, it's definitely not. Factorizing trinomial, you can't do that either, so we can't do anything with x squared add 2. So we'll just leave it as that. But in order to get 0, either x plus 1 would equal 0, or x squared plus 2 would equal 0. Obviously if x plus 1 equals 0, x would equal negative 1. So that's fine, that's has got a root. And if x squared add 2 equals 0, well if you subtract 2 from both sides, you've got x squared equals negative 2. And if you square root that, well, wait a minute, you can't square root a negative. It doesn't work. No. So you would say that there's no real solution. You can't get the square root of a negative. Meaning then that x equals negative 1 is the only real root, which is what we were asked to show. Try some of these questions on your own. It's exercise 7G, page 140. Try them. Try finding the roots of a polynomial, solving polynomial equations. See how you get on. Good luck. See if you can find them.